it has come to my attention that yesterday <laughs> was the International Day of Women in Science and I wanted to talk about that. If you've been following my channel then you probably know that I did an undergraduate degree in maths at the University of Nottingham before coming to the University of Cambridge to do a, a Masters in Philosophy of Science which is a bit of a change but I wanted to talk about what that means in terms of being a woman in science and how I ended up there and any advice I'd give. I was inspired to talk about this after reading an article by my good friend Alice which I will link in the description and give that a read if you're interested. Going back to when I was at secondary school it was an all-girls grammar school so I never really felt different for taking science subjects at A-level. Um, what really hit me was I went to, when I was picking my A-levels, I went to an open day at a, a mixed school and in the further maths class there was four of us and I was the only girl doing the further maths option in this taster day. I ended up staying at my girls' grammar school for my A-levels and in the further maths there it was like a class full of like 20 girls. <laughs> and it was completely normal for everyone to have aspirations to be uh, an engineer or a biochemist. Um, being a grammar school everyone had very academically orientated <laughs> aspirations as well. So I was lucky in that way that I never felt different for doing maths and it was just something that most people did anyway, you never felt different at all. Coming to do maths at uni then was a bit of a change. Um, it was almost equal, like 45-40% women, 60% guys roughly, uh, but I was the sort of women in maths ambassador for maths in my first year and I don't think I ever got unmade women in maths ambassador and no one replaced me so I guess I still was <laughs> for the rest of my degree and uh, through through doing that I learned a lot about the, statis the statistics of mathematics at my university. Interestingly Nottingham is having less women in its maths cohort year on year, it's slowly declining. When they tried to investigate this, they looked at Nottingham compared with its two main university competitors, which is Birmingham and Manchester. And with this focus group that they did, the women nearly always preferred Birmingham or Manchester's mathematics website. Putting a photo of a woman doing maths on your course page isn't enough. There's clearly something there that's implying maybe it's the use of Perhaps it's within the language where it's using more action words and less sort of emotional supportive words. And I did feel that, that I, I don't know how to describe this, but when I was doing my dissertation in third year, I was going through some really tough times and nearly all the dissertation supervisors were, you know, white guys. And you feel like you can't discuss how things are difficult for you or talk to your problems to a white guy. Like, I'm sure they'd be understanding, but you just feel like a woman would get it. And I can imagine there being a sort of racial parallel to that as well. Whereas perhaps if you're a black student, you'd prefer to talk about certain issues with, you know, a black supervisor or lecturer. I did feel that and as well as that STEM subjects can be very, what's the word, like they can be a little bit cold I think, especially at higher levels you're expected to get on with it, um, I don't know, y yeah you're expected to get on with it and there's not as much being done for support. The lady in the maths department that I was speaking to about uh, the whole women in maths situation said that often in board meetings in the maths department she's the only woman there she brings up something about outreach getting more women in maths all the men in the boardroom will be like oh yeah that's a great idea though we, we support you but they won't actually do anything themselves they'll just agree and they'll be like hmm, yeah sure go for it we support you but then it ends there 
there's no action being taken by the men. The men in the maths departments need to do more. The women are doing all they can. Something to think about. The other thing I wanted to talk about was how women in particular, I think, define themselves as being a woman in science. Because I had a bit of that crisis myself, I guess, leaving my maths degree and going into a philosophy degree, which is a lot more dominated by women. Would I still consider myself to be a woman in maths, a woman in science? Am I any less of a mathematician just because I'm doing a philosophy degree? Just because I'm not doing maths anymore? I think a lot of people feel that. A lot of women in STEM, I think, overcommit themselves to STEM because they feel like if they leave, then all the glass ceiling shattering has been for nothing, all the barriers that they've been breaking has been for nothing. Which is very unfair because men are allowed to flip between careers and things as much as they want. They don't feel like they have pressure to stay in STEM because they're a man in STEM. Women, I think, feel that pressure more to show that they don't want to back down and say it's not for me. And I think that's another reason why women don't go into STEM as much. Because you feel like you have to overcommit yourself to it. You feel like, oh, if I do this biology degree and stay doing biosciences, I should stay there because it's all men and there needs to be a woman in the room, which there does. But I think with that, when we overcommit ourselves like that, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to break those barriers. And then it actually turns other people off from entering those fields because they don't want to put the pressure on themselves to stay in that field. Whereas men can flip between fields as much as they want. And this is something Alice talked about in her essay about she's no less of a physicist when she's cycling or doing arts. She's still a physicist when she's not actively doing physics. Just because you're not actively using your degree doesn't mean you're not that thing, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I think as well it's a confidence thing. Like maybe I'd, I, I feel like I undermine myself by not considering myself a mathematician still because I'm feeling like, oh, but then I need that pressure to show off to show how good I am at maths and stuff when no one's asking that and I shouldn't need to do that. And I still want to be considered a mathematician even when I'm not doing maths, even when I'm playing guitar or singing or <laughs> filming this video and filming my random little life that doesn't involve studying maths, I'm still a mathematician. And I think that's really important to remember that you don't have to put pressure on yourself to go all the way with STEM. Just being there and taking up space in that physics A-level class full of boys or that chemistry or further maths A-level class and then just going on to do philosophy or drama or law You've, you're still a scientist and you shouldn't undermine what took you to get there. You shouldn't undermine yourself for leaving. I don't like saying leaving science because you never you never truly leave it. You, you are a scientist. If you are interested in science and you've studied science, you are a scientist. We need to stop gatekeeping this definition of scientist. Yeah, I want to encourage more people to take these STEM subjects without feeling like they have to be a trailblazer and smash the glass ceiling for other women and things and just it sounds a bit trite but just following your interests and feeling confident enough especially as a woman or especially as a person of colour or non-binary to still call yourself a scientist a mathematician a biologist a physicist an engineer and yeah, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it if you're a woman or non-binary person in STEM how you feel about it if you left STEM, how do you feel? Do you feel like you're still a scientist? Uh, comment down below and be sure to give Alice's article a read. I found it really interesting. Bye.